sister. One, two.
He blessed my soul. Come on and clap your hands for the choir. He blessed my soul. When he woke us up this morning, that was a blessing. Amen. He allowed our eyes to open, that was a blessing. He's in the blessed business. Yes, our scripture be coming from Joshua, verses 14 and 15. you happy will you please stand for those who can stand if you can't stand we understand Amen. now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth yeah. and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood yes, Lord. and in Egypt yeah. and serve ye the Lord and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord Choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land we dwell. Yeah. But as for me and my house, yes, Lord. we will. Yeah. We will serve the Lord. Amen. The reading and the hearing of the word is already blessed. Let us go to the throne of grace. Amen. Oh, Master. Yeah. Lord, we want to call on your name this morning. Oh, oh Master, we love you. Thank you for being such an awesome God. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Lord, thank you for sitting high and looking low. Thank you for the blessings, Lord, that you're spreading out all over the land. We thank you for waking us up this morning. Not only did you wake us up, Father, you allowed us a small portion of our limbs. Some have legs, but Lord, they can't walk. Some have eyes, but they can't see. Oh God, you are so good. If it had not been for you, that was on our side. Where will we be? Lord, every time we need a blessing, Jesus, it's always there. We thank you for your son who went on that cross and died for the remission of our sins. He didn't know no sin, but he took on the sins of the world. God, you are good. God, you are mighty. God, you are powerful. We realize, Jesus, that you still in the blessed business. We ask you to bless us calmly, collectively. Father, we would always praise your holy name. Thank you for the mothers. The ones that's here and the ones that are watching on live screen. We realize, Jesus, that it takes a village to raise a child. In this barren land, Lord, we're having so much problems. You know all about it. Your time is not our time. But we know in time, you're going to make it all right. Thank you for our mothers. Father, we realize that they are the reason we are here today. We thank you for our pastor and first lady. 
We thank you for bringing them back safely off their journey. So much going on in the world today. You know all about it. You know all about it. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. Jesus, you never change. You said in your word, you will never leave us or will you forsake us. We thank you. We love you. We praise your holy name. Now, Lord, we ask you to tabernacle with us just for a little while today. As our pastor comes forth and presents the word. Let our ears hear what his mouth speaks. Bless our musicians. Bless this magnificent choir that we have. I will close this prayer now. But never will we close our love for you. Bless us, Father. Bless us, Father. Bless us, Father. Amen. Church family, 110 Green Lake, Hopkins, South Carolina. And we pray today that something will be done and said that will uplift you and encourage you on today. Amen. And to our ministers, amen, Evangelist Jackson, we thank God for you and thank God for you so dutifully and boldly standing in for me when I was out. You did an awesome job. And we know you could do an awesome job because you are a woman of God. Hallelujah. And the, and the blood of Jesus is over you. So we thank God for it. Let's give, let's stand and give it back to for him a praise this morning. He's quiet and sitting there, but she's one that loves the Lord.
We want to thank God for you. Let's give the evangelist William a hand of praise. You know, sometimes when you be laying upon your bed sick, the Lord can do a lot of things to you. We have to learn to appreciate one another. We have to learn to appreciate one another. And to the absence of our other ministers, we thank God for them also. And to our deacons, we want to thank you for opening up us with a prayer and a scripture this morning. Deacon Mac and, and uh, Deacon S. Mac, y'all have a beautiful voice when you're singing together as a husband and a wife. Now, y'all know what I'm talking about. Both of y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. 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 And to our choir, the voices of praise. We want to thank God. Let's give our choir a hand. Look how beautiful this is. Amen. Pastor started something. When Pastor got on that choir, he sang it. Now, he said, uh, now that Pastor got to get on the choir and sing. Now, ain't that something? <laughs> but everybody's sitting out in the congregation. You see, when you join the household of faith, you don't come in just to walk the seat and to sit out there and say amen to the pastor saying behind there is something for each and every one of us to do in the house of God. Amen. Now whether you're doing or not, oh, well, I can't say where well, the music is loud and everybody else singing, they won't know the different notes. <laughs> <laughs> so you get up there and you give God some praise and to our mothers, amen, Mother Coles, amen, and the answer of our other mothers, we want to thank God for our mothers. Let's bless the Lord for our mothers on this morning. Amen. Thank God for Sister Maya's amen. Pressing her way. Y'all don't know Sister Maya's story, but Sister Maya's has a story. We want to thank God for her pressing her way out to the house of worship and Sister Joyner. Amen. Wearing her oxygen so beautifully. She's coming right in the Lord's house with that oxygen on. Amen. A lot of people say, I'm going to stay home. Because I'm wearing this oxygen. But she said, no, I'm coming in the house of the Lord because God did it. Who did it? God did it. And we thank God for the resources that he has blessed us with. They help us to live. Amen. And we truly want to thank the Lord this morning. Now it's time for the word. I was watching the word on live stream, but there's nothing like watching and listening in person. And I know Pastor has a word for us on today. I want to thank God. And when our pastor comes, we're going to tune everything out. And we're going to tune in to the word of God. Because in these last and evil days, we need the word. We don't need to be walking side the road picking up flowers and looking at this and that. But we need to pick up on the word and tune in to the word of God. Because that word is going to bless somebody on this week. Somebody's going to need to reflect back on what the word of God says to us. So right after singing up our beautiful choir, the next voice you will hear, none other than that of our pastor, Pastor Michael Fuller. Come on, let's put our hands together. If you feel like having a church,
You know trouble won't last always. Oh, remember there's a friend in Jesus. There's a friend in Jesus who will wipe your tears away. Will wipe your tears away. And if and if your heart is broken, I want you to just lift your hand. Just lift your hand. Come on and let him know. Come on, I know I can. Your loved one. All your friends and loved ones. Sometimes they're nowhere to be found. I know where to be found. What I want you to do, remember there's a friend in Jesus. There's a friend in Jesus. He yeah. will wipe your tears away. He will wipe your tears away. And if, and if your heart is broken, just 
just look up to heaven and sing for it. Yeah, yeah, I know I can. Don't you give up? No, no. I know that I can Just hold on, joy, come in the morning. Oh, well, they come my way. Jesus, my life is in your hand. With Jesus, I can take it. Hear my door. With him, I know I can stand. No matter what we come my way.
our devotion leader back in the house, Evangelist Scott. We thank God for having you back. Offer your sick leave. It's a blessing to have you back. Amen. 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 And it sounded like you wanted to preach this morning. Amen. But we will give you opportunity real soon. Amen. Amen. And we certainly thank God for our deacon brothering, for our mothers, Mother Cole, Mother Harris, and Mother Mixon here absent, First Lady Fullard, to the official staff at the Unity Missionary Baptist Church, those that are watching by way of live screen, to our musicians, to our ushers, to all of you in respective places, we thank God for you this morning, and we count it a blessing to be in the number one more time. To our ministers, Evangelist Jackson, Minister William, Minister King, as she came in, and to Dr. Denson here absent, to all of our ministers, and each and every one under the sound of my voice. And now that I've spoken to you, I will say to you, good morning, good morning, and good morning. Amen. It's a good morning to be back in the house of the Lord. We thank God how he has blessed us um, um, this morning with the perfect singing this morning. And we just thank God for all those that have embraced the choir, our new choir members are uh, that been redeemed. We thank God for all of you, Sister Christine, uh, Sister Kelly, Sister Raven, Deacon Searles, um, Sister Dill, all of you came back and just joined up with the choir. Amen. Is Brother Dingle back there? And I, I got to say this, because Brother Dingle, but feel better now that I'm not up there singing. He, he said, I was messing the choir up. Amen. <laughs> so now the choir sounds better, Brother Dingle. Amen. Amen. See how God works. See how God works. Amen. It's just a blessing. I'm so, I'm so happy and elated. We just thank God that you all came and just took on of this task. And y'all sound so good. Sound so good. I didn't know Raven could sing like that. I really didn't. But good Lord, Raven. Keep on, sister. Keep on. It is a blessing. It is a hidden talent. Hidden, hidden talent. So we thank God. We thank God. Amen. And now that God has brought us forth, I want to say prior to going any further, I just thank all of you all for your birthday wishes and for the beautiful cars and the monetary gift that I received and the, and the beautiful cars. Um, the cars were very beautiful. And I, I received one car in particular. Um, and I always get this card from this minister, um, send me a card every year, and, and I won't call her name, but um, she always placed $2 bills in her card, and I have a stack of $2 bills hidden in my box at the house, amen. I will forever be grateful um, for this minister doing this, and I always, I got a stack there stacking up. Ever since I've been here, this minister was doing this. And then I received um, other cards as well, but then there was another card from the pastor's aide, and I don't know who picked it out, um, but it spoke my life in the future, I mean the past up to this present time. And I said, this person must have known something about me. And I won't tell what name I call that might help pick it out because I don't want to get it wrong. But pastor's aide, I thank you all for the wording of that card. And um, even Sister Fuller said, well, you need to fr um, keep this one on your desk and just frame this one now. Because it spoke um, to my heart um, a little bit about my past and a little bit about who I am now. It spoke exactly who I am. Pastor A's, I thank you all as well. All of those that send your beautiful cards and your monetary gift, it is a blessing. And I thank the, the other ones for your text, um, for your phone call and your beautiful text. Um, it was a blessing that you all thought of me. The pastor is getting old now. He's get, getting to be an old man now. And I feel good about it. 
you good or fine. I know Brother Tucker probably saying, oh, no, nah, you still got milk around your mouth. Amen. That's Brother Tucker, but that's all right. I'm getting old now. I thank God for you all, and I feel good. I feel good, and some of you all want to know my age. Yes, I'm, I'm old in one fashion, and I'm young in another fashion. I'm 61 years old. I'm 61 years old. And, uh, and, and, for, and, and for some of you, um, my mindset now is, God, get me through another year so I can do like Grandma knows used to say. I'm going with the message, but I can do like Grandma knows used to say. I'm waiting on my SSI. <laughs> Amen. Oh, yeah, that's a good feeling even thinking about it. Amen. So, yes, yes, and I'm getting old. They used to be saying that around the first of the month. I'm waiting on my SSI. And I said, boy, they old. But now look at me. I'm counting down, Deacon Johnson. I'm counting down. Amen. And no, I'm not going to wait. If Lord let me live to see 62, I'm going to get my SSI. Amen. Oh, that felt good to say that. All right. All right. Now that I got that out of the way, we thank you all for your prayers while we was away. And we thank God for Brother Rod um, coming up speaking so boldly. Let's give Brother Rod a round of applause. And it was the last minute. Um, I asked Brother Rod about that Wednesday. And for those that wondered, um, well, he got a brother to speak uh, while himself and the assistant pastor was out. In the Methodist field, the United Methodist Church, um, brothers and sisters speak as lay members. Uh, as lay members, as lay members, they come up and speak. Um, and anyone can come up and speak as a lay member if you know the word of God. So for those that are uh, that Baptist fire that just said, well, we Baptist, we Baptist. No, if you know the word of God, you save and sanctify. Even the Methodists as a lay member, before you ever get licensed, you have to preach different churches and things of that nature. And when they don't have nobody to preach, you come up and you preach. But Brother Rod was our lay speaker last week, and I thank God for him. He did an awesome job. And also for um, Sister Katrina, Sister um, Sharon Harper, and those that help out with the youth directing th them on last Sunday. Let's give them a round of applause. Uh, excellent job uh, with the youth that Saturday and Sunday and for the um, adults that came out that Saturday to assist them. We thank you as well. And we congratulate all our youth, those that are going in away from kindergarten to first grade to middle school to high school, you name it. We thank God for you and we congratulate you. And we thank God that we have the youth directors here that don't mind working with the youth and working so beautifully. Uh, we thank God for you all. Excellent job. And that being said, um, anything else I hadn't covered this far, I, uh, preferably I will cover it at the end of the message. But I want to say these particular things prior to going into the message this morning. But we are so grateful for all of you. And we ask you to continue to just keep praying that God will ever bless us. We thank God for the Sunday school. Sister Bennett, um, um, back off of her journey, teaching our heart this morning. Let's give her a round of applause as well. And then, then and I'm going to get to the message um, for our um, Brother and Deacon King and Trustee Mac working out their heart. You all see who those live screen televisions on the wall, those monitors, shall I say. Those monitors are beautiful. And we know that in modern day time and everybody's advancing and this is something that we needed and we wanted and we talked about it and God bless us to get them. But these two um, mechanically inclined individual, Deacon King and Brother Mac, um, they were the ones that mounted those live sc those screen, those monitors, and we thank them for them. Don't they look beautiful? Yeah. Come on, y'all. Don't they look beautiful? Yeah. Amen. We thank you all for working out your heart, um, mounting those screens on the wall, and that wasn't wasn't an easy job. Amen. And and I and I understand. I understand that. Some of you might well have done things different. I understand that. Uh, but guess what? God really blessing us. Amen. God is really blessing us. He's really blessing us. And I'm thankful. All right. All right, Pastor. It's time to go on, Pastor. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm happy this morning. Oh, yeah, one more thing. Uh, now that time have changed and uh, they have moved the mass mandate, and we still have um, on our door, and we still have posted um, masks required. But as of today, um, you will no longer be required to wear a mask unless you just want to. It's up to you. If you want to wear your mask, it's fine. 
But if you don't want to wear them, we're not obligating you and we're not asking you to wear them. But those that feel comfortable wearing your mask, please, ma'am, please, sir, wear your mask. Because I know some of you are wearing me here, and then we see you on the street in a crowd. Uh, you're just laughing and talking and rattling people's face and everything else, but you come to church. Oh, we got to wear our mask. <laughs> but it's, it's all good. It's all good. But I want you all to know that it's no longer a requirement that you wear them here unless you want to. Now, the ones that wear them, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, if you have some sickness going on, you want to put your mask on. Uh, if you have um, anything, you say, well, you know what? I'm not comfortable yet. It's still fine. Um, but mask is messing with a lot of people breathing and giving them, causing them more issues having a mask on so long. So, so the, um, as of next week, you won't see the um, temperature gauge and you won't have to sign your name anymore um, and things of that nature. Just come in. But if you do have some sickness, um, please, ma'am, please, sir, put your mask on or either stay home or something of that nature. Um, but um, we're no longer obligating you or asking you to do it unless you feel um, comfortable wearing them wearing them. if not then it's okay all right we have that order of business out the way so now preferably you have your bibles with you your road map or your iphone um, uh, we'll be reading from the book of saint mark the 10th chapter and our reading will begin at the 46th verse saint matthew 10 and 46 amen all right and say again saint mark i'm sorry amen um, things running through my mind as I was looking at St. Um, Mark on one paper and St. Matthew on, in the book. Amen. Well, I got on my old bifocals this morning. I got an excuse. Amen. All right. St. Mark, the 10th chapter, the 46th verse. And, and I would say to you, um, you all clapped your hands when I um, mentioned that we're no longer required to wear the mask. So now when we leave and then when you hear a sidebar conversation, all the pastor ought to know better than that. We need to keep wearing our masks. And then you say, why are you sitting there clapping your hand then? <laughs> amen. Y'all know how the pastor roll. Y'all know. How. Yeah, amen. Amen. You know, only you get your mind sometimes like the children. You just tell it like it is. Yeah. Amen. Because y'all know how y'all do sometimes. Amen. Amen. So now that we got all that clear, St. Mark, the 10th chapter, the 46th verse. Uh, and so, and, and on the end of that, I love y'all. Yes, I do love y'all. Amen. All right. What do we have? It's St. Mark, the 10th chapter, the 46th verse. It reads, And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway signs begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more in great deal, thy son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he cast away his garment, rose, and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith have made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Yes. Thus I read St. Mark, the 10th chapter, the 46th throughout the 52nd verse. God's word to God's people. If I must use a thought this morning, it will be a thought for each and every one of us in our situation or in our circumstances the thought would be Lord do not pass me by well Lord do not pass me by shall we pray Father God I come this morning in the name of thy son Jesus 
Lord, I come uh, in no strength of my own. But I come, Lord, looking unto you, uh, the author and the finisher of my faith. I come this morning, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. I heard somebody say it's me. It's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. And I come, Lord, for your people as well. Some, Lord, they need you for one thing. And some, Lord, they need you for another. But this morning, Lord, I ask you, Lord, please, Lord, hear my humble cry. Please, Lord, don't pass me by. I need you, Lord, to preach through me. I need you, Lord, to speak a word, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Somebody is by the roadside. Somebody is on the bedside, the bed of affliction. Somebody, Lord, is crying, Lord, please, Lord, hear. Hear our humble cry through the prayers in the name of thy son Jesus. Hear us, Lord. Speak, Lord. Touch, Lord. Heal, Lord. Reprove, Lord. And rebuke, Lord. And Father, if you would just do that, Lord, I will be ever careful to give your name, your name the praise. In the name of thy son, Jesus the Christ, I say amen. Amen, amen again. Amen. And amen again. You may be seated. Oh, Lord, do not pass me by. Circumstances, situations, sickness, trouble in this whole world, misunderstanding, the government having problem, family having problem, there are health problem, problem on the job, problem dealing with yourself. Sometimes you feel that you're just a lonely child. Sometimes you feel you can't get help from no way. But I'm here to tell you today, if you ask the Lord, Lord, please don't pass me by. He won't pass you by. Uh, I'm going to tell the story over about Blind Bartimaeus. Um, and preferably it won't be that long. See, for Jesus, the end of the road was not very far away. Today we find Jesus and his disciple in the village of Jericho. A short 15 miles from Jerusalem. Jesus had been talking about going to Jerusalem for quite some time. Now they are almost there. And see, most people like Jesus and the disciples uh, pass through Jericho on their way to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. But as he came here, it was a custom when a famous rabbi traveled anywhere. Jesus was surrounded by people who hoped to learn from him as they walked. So, 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 the very task of traveling to Jerusalem became something of a mobile seminary. Since Jericho was so close to Jerusalem, it was home to many religious leaders and priests, all eager to see Jesus and listen to him. The Jewish law required that anyone who lived within 15 miles of Jerusalem had an obligation to go there for the Passover, which would mean that almost everyone in Jericho, those who were physically impaired, were not required to fulfill this requirement. I say again, those who were physical in pair was not required to fulfill requirement. 
the people unable to travel there would generally line the streets in order to capture the excitement as the pilgrim passed by. Such people were particularly eager to see anyone who was famous, and Jesus would have fallen into that category. Now, now, now Mark tells us that at the northern gate of, of, Jerusalem, of Jericho, a blind beggar named Bartimaeus sat in a well-established place begging for corns and food. And, and see, this was the social welfare system of that time, I should say. Day after day, the world passed by this blind man, rarely noticing him, certainly not caring about him. See, that's how the world would do you when you're down and out. Sometimes people don't care about you, don't pay you any attention. They keep passing right on by you. That's why you have to say, Lord, do not pass me by when I'm in my situation, when I'm in my sickness, when I'm down and out, when the world is on my shoulder. Lord, don't pass me by because the world would do you like they did blind bar you. They kept passing right on by him, not caring about him. The blind man, he heard the sound of the caravans, uh, the joyous laughter of the children, the nasty gossip, and the business shatter of the men. But he saw nothing. He could only hear, but he couldn't see a thing. Uh, and that's something else. Uh, oh, you, you hear people gossiping. You hear the kids laughing. All this going on, but you, but you can't see anything. But in many ways, uh, Bartimaeus uh, was a non-person until this special day. Until this special day when Jesus passed it, his corner. In other words, he was overlooked over and over again. You can say what you want. As long as you're doing good, looking good, people will recognize you. People will take notice of you. But when you're down and out, down on your luck or have some bad things happen, people will overlook you. And don't let people start gossiping about you. People will turn their back on you. That's why I said Bartimaeus was like a non-person. People can easily treat you like that in no time. Oh, don't get it twisted. Think because today you up and seem as if people love you. And I say seem as if people love you. Now tomorrow they can turn their back on you and treat you like a non-person. But, but, but sensing the, the excitement, Bartimaeus asked those around him what was happening and they told him that Jesus of Nazareth, the great healer, was passing through. Jesus of Nazareth, the great healer, was passing through. So Bartimaeus uh, knew this was an opportunity he could not ignore. See, when opportunity knocked, we got to make a move. We can't ignore when opportunity knocked, and we know it's an opportunity of a lifetime. Bartimaeus know that, hey, now, this is an opportunity. I can get my sight. I can see what's going on all around me. So he know he couldn't give up this opportunity. So I say to you today, when opportunity knock, which God is knocking on our door each and every day, don't, don't deny him. Don't turn your back on him. Don't, don't feel as if I, I can wait till another time. Uh, when opportunity knock and you know God is knocking on your heart, say today is the day, heart and not your heart. That's the day to go ahead and receive and accept him as your personal savior. And that's the gospel. Uh, the first question was addressed to Jesus by the Pharisee, and it concerned whether it was lawful for a man to divorce his wife. Uh, you all heard stuff like that before, right? You read it in the Bible before, right? Some of you still keep that around a little bit and have your own opinion, right? Okay, and then a week later, the question came for a rich young man who would ask Jesus what he must do to, uh, to receive eternal life. You all know as Nicodemus wanted to know what he needed to do to receive eternal life. And Jesus told him, you must be born again. But today we hear, see, Jesus posed a question. He posed a question to the blind man. What do you want me to do for you? See now, Bartimaeus, the blind beggar, at the side of the road, he suffered a loss of his sight. 
at some early time in life. So in other words, at one time or another, he was able to see. That's something to think about now, because now the commentary tells us that at one time or another, earlier, he lost his sight. Blindness was a common affliction of the Palestinian days uh, during Jesus' time. A lot of those folks in Palestine lost their sight for whatever reason. Now we can imagine that this beggar was not very attractive because he didn't have his sight. He couldn't see and people treat him all kind of way. People didn't want to have him around because he couldn't look out for them. He couldn't keep watch out for anything. But though his prospect were limited, his faith and optimistic spirit were strong. He knew that opportunity was knocking. Though when he heard that Jesus was passing, Bartimaeus was determined to grasp this opportunity. I say to you today, if you are not born again, if you are not saved, and the hellhound is on your track and seems as if you just can't get up off the roadside, uh, off the bed of affliction, you can't get out of that sin that's so easy um, uh, plaguing you. Uh, today, opportunity is knocking and Jesus is already here. Uh, he, he, he ignored those who told him to be quiet. Crying out to Jesus. You see, a lot of times, as long as you're down, people want to keep you down. I want you to stay down. When you try to do better, you ever know that people start making excuses. If I were you, I won't do that. Uh, you better off just what you're doing. I, don't, don't even try that. No, no, don't, don't, don't do that. I, if I were you. Well, you're not me. You got your life and God is blessing you. Why you don't want me to be blessed? So bottom man, he ignored them. Uh, they told him to be quiet. He cried out to Jesus. When his soft voice did not work, he began to yell, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. You see, sometimes when the devil tries to tell you, oh, don't do that, no, don't say that, you can't do this and that, you, you yell the loud, get thee behind me, Satan. Man, don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You got to speak to that devil. That devil wants you to be blind. That devil wants you to be down and out. That devil don't want things to work for you. You got to be like blind Bartimaeus. You got to speak the louder. The more the devil come to you trying to stop you, the more the louder you speak. Oh, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Somehow this blind man reached out in hope toward a heavenly radiance he could sense. Even if he could not see Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He says that Jesus would have mercy on him. The story of blind bar made us here and inspire many people. And there was a song written by one lady that uh, went through some things. And some say because she may have lost her sight. You all heard of Fanny Crosby, the great gospel writer. She lost her sight as a child. She could see at one time, but as a child, she lost her sight. And in many ways, she could see so much more than others. So don't fool yourself because some person can't see physically. Uh, they still can see more than people that who have their eyesight. Oh, but then, then she wrote the story because of what she'd gone through. She wrote a song called, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. And she went on in the song and she said, Wow, on other thou calling, do not pass me by. Fanny Cross but wrote the song, uh, where well, history tells us because of losing her sight, and she wrote the song here, and that encouraged her that everything was going to be all right. But Mark tells us, as I go on with the story and try to contend here, Mark tells us that Jesus heard Bartimaeus, despite the roll of the crowd, Jesus stopped and listened to the cry from the margin. Jesus then commanded that the blind man be brought to him. Jesus gently gave him a chance to make his request known. God is giving us a chance each and every day to make our request known. 
A lot of times we talk to everybody else about everything. We go every place we don't need to be going, try to get answer from the palm reader, from the root worker. But Jesus is waiting to answer our request. Yeah, some of y'all don't want to hear that, right? I went here. I, I just needed some answer. I, I went down. I, I just needed to know. Make your request known to God. You a born again child of God, but you going somewhere else to look for somebody to tell you what God already done told you. And most of the time, you know the answer. And, and I'm going to say this. You go up in there, what did he tell you? Well, you know, um, don't do this. He got something against you. Uh, 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 be careful what you say to her. All kind of crazy stuff. Let me leave that alone. Y'all. <laughs> Okay, all, all right, all right. I'm going to tell you, I'm getting old now. Oh, <laughs> it feels good. All right, all right. I'm moving on, but y'all know the truth. Now, and I, I, that's what I like about our seniors, our, our, our elderly folks. They know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all young, sophisticated folks, what are he talking about? <laughs> all, right, all right, but Mark tells us here, uh, Jesus commanded the blind man to be brought to him, and he, he gave him an opportunity to make his request known. What will you have me to do for you? Certainly there was no surprise in the answer. Bartimaeus gave Jesus. My teacher, let me see again. Very simple. The things that we need out of life, if we pray and believe and ask God, and not ask him a mystery, in other words, not ask him not believing, but we ask him and believe it. It's our desire, his will, we would get it. But in this wonderful account of blind Bartimaeus and Jesus, we see a man given the gift of restored vision. Somehow, the combination of his determination and the presence of Jesus Christ in his life affects a radio change for him. Something happened in his life, and when we accept Jesus and go to God, he answered our prayer request, something would happen to us. But God gave him his sight. Jesus gave him his sight. Told him, go in peace. Thy faith have made thee whole. See, his faith um, in what Jesus could do, his faith in the healing process made him whole. Uh, so today I want to share with you and leave with you. Uh, there could be uh, some blindness uh, in your life. But in one way or another, we all struggle with some blindness. Sometimes we can't see clearly into the future, but it causes us to worry about tomorrow. It calls us to worry about our resource. As we get older, will I be able to pay my bills? As you get older, will I be able to have health insurance, a Medicaid, a Medicare? Long will I be able to handle this health crisis? My health seems like it's failing. Seems as if I've been sick so long and can't get well. Hey, I'm struggling. With this blindness, Lord, don't pass me by. Oh, Lord, but God, God wants us to know the day that it's going to be all right. And I know sometimes we can't see clearly. Mm, Lord, we can't see clearly because of what's going on around us. And if we be honest and we admit to ourselves and to others that some people have lost their way, some people are using sickness as a reason for not serving the Lord because it seems as if they can't get well. Some people have lost their way and won't come to the house of God because of COVID. It's just an excuse. But I'm here to tell you if you live long enough, sooner or later you won't call on God. If you live long enough, sooner or later you gonna say, God, oh Jesus, son of David. 
have mercy on me. Yeah, yeah. As we as we come to a close here, yeah. Barmaeus uh, was comfortable sitting uh, on the side of the road. He had settled uh, into the pattern uh, that was working for him, uh, but it was limited. You see, you may be uh, settled uh, and satisfied uh, coming to church uh, once a month uh, or twice a month. Uh, you may be satisfied uh, praying every now and then. Uh, you may be satisfied uh, reading the word every now and then. Uh, you have you got a pattern and you settle uh, but it is a limit uh, see many of us uh, are no different uh, than bomb is uh, we accept what's going on for a minute uh, and we're satisfied uh, i've been down uh, so long uh, cause down don't bother me uh, anymore uh, it should bother you uh, if you've been down for a long time uh, it should get you to get up and call on the son of david Jesus, have mercy, have mercy on me, oh Lord, Jesus, passing by our corner today, whatever you need, God got it, he's passing by our corner, and he's calling us today, he is calling each and every one of us, and he's asking, what will you have me to do, what will it be? What will uh, cause you to come out of darkness? Oh, Lord, what will cause you to stop doing the same thing uh, day in and day out? Oh, what will cause you uh, to cry out uh, to the son of David? What will cause you to say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me? Oh, are you satisfied? Stain in the same predicament and making excuses blaming everybody except yourself a lot of time people are in situation and predicament because they want to they choose to you can god will bring you out of it if you request to come out of it but some people satisfy being in a predicament misery love company Pity, love, pity, party. Hey! Party over here, party over there, party everywhere. Pity, party. Hey, and it's satisfied. Satisfied with the pity party, but God can bring you out of it. You satisfy being in darkness, there is no joy in darkness, no peace in darkness. Stop being satisfied where you are. Uh, I'm going to leave that alone. What will it be? Jesus is calling you. He's calling you. He's calling me. He's saying to you, what will you have me to do? Jesus have already prepared a way. Jesus, son of David, as I come to my close, I say, pass me not, oh gentle Savior. And while following Jesus, I could imagine he was saying, Amazing, amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind. Yeah, I was blind. Yeah, but now. 
but now I see I was sick, couldn't get well, but now I'm healed. Yes, I am. I say to you, I'm bound. I'm bound from Mount Zion. Yeah. And if anybody make it out. Anybody at you who I am, where I come from, and where I'm going, you tell them I am a child of the king bound from Mount Zion, and I'm trying to make it in because I asked the Lord to not pass me by. Lord, don't pass me by. If you got an issue, if you got sickness, you got home problem, you got health problem. Ask the Lord, Lord, don't pass me by. He is ready to answer your request, but you got to make it known. You got to make it known to Jesus and plead the blood of Jesus, and you're gonna be all right. Lord, do not pass me by.
us want to make it. We want to make it to that great city. No more sickness, no more dying, no more troubles. Every day will be that Sunday. That's what we're working for. Thank God for the word that was so boldly spoken on today. Do not pass me by. That's all of our cry this morning. Savior, do not pass me by. The word has been so boldly speaking today. We're not going to believe that everybody is saved has asked God to come into their life and forgive them for all of their sins. We believe today that all we have to do is cry out to the Lord. And whatever you cried out to God for, surely he'll hear your cry. If there's anyone in the house today that's not saved, have not yet accepted Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior, all you got to do is cry out, Lord, have mercy on me. Forgive me for my sins. I'm sorry, Lord. You don't have to go through that long format. Just say, Lord, I'm sorry. Yes, he will hear your cry. So if there's one this morning that don't know the Lord, have not yet accept Jesus, have not made God of Christ over your life, right where you are, your altar can be right where you're sitting or standing. Because it's between you and God anyway. Only you and God. Nobody else will have anything to do with it, but we are glad that one say, I have accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. But between you and God, only God knows. I can't say you say that you can't say I'm not saved. But God knows that. So we're going to take this one that everyone has accepted Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior. Now the doors of the church are now open. You may stand. Those who may stand upon your feet.
God, you told us to cast out. 
for those that came up for prayer and special prayer for our brother only God knows what's going on but he's able Amen. he will hear our humble cry Come on now, he will answer our prayer request but we have to request it so we thank God for all of you and while I'm standing prior to the offering while it's on my mind we do solicit your prayers for our brother Leon who lost his mother and we solicit your prayers for him and his family as he go through this time of bereavement. And also for Sister Bereen, one of our former member who lost her mother. Uh, we solicit your prayers for her as well and their family. And we do ask that um, um, Sister Weatherby has sent out a, a group text um, giving some information. So if you need any other information, please see Sister Weatherby uh, for a time frame of what um, the service will be and when where the service will be and the time frame if you would like to attend so we thank God for you I want to mention that why it's fresh on my mind and my mind is racing so again we thank God for each and every one of you we're now preparing for our offering now I just want to thank all of you for being so faithful with your tithe and offering um, you all have been doing a great job and the ones that still a little lacking I will ask you to just come up to um, the pace with everyone else and pray about it and come up to the pace with everyone else. But for the most part, you all are doing a great job. And I thank all of you for paying your tithe and all for supporting the church wholeheartedly. We don't talk about money too much at all, really. But we do ask you to pay your tithe and offering. And then things that you are part of, auxiliaries, or, um, special occasion. We ask you to do, do your part. Do your part and God will bless you. So usher at this time, our usher will come to receive our offering.
Shall we stand? pray. Father, we love you. We adore you. We praise your holy name. Lord, we thank you for all your many blessings. Lord, right now we pause to return back to you just a small portion of what you've given us. Lord, we ask your blessing upon all those who were able to participate. And if there was any that wasn't, we ask your blessing upon in Jesus' name we pray. Can we all say amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, trusty Mac, for the blessing of the offering. Amen. Amen. Prior to announcement, uh, we, this is a new month, the month of June, and we do have birthdays and uh, maybe some anniversary and celebration. On the birthday list, list and you all let me know if I omit anyone, um, uh, Mother Cole on the 6th, Mother Maddie Cole on June the 6th, Dr. Denson on the 30th, Mother Dr. Harris on the 27th, Brother Henry Jackson on the 28th, Brother Tyrone Jones on the 16th, Sister Elon the Mac on the 27th, Sister Chan Mac on the 26th, Brother Lewis McMillan on the 7th, Brother Eric Robinson on the 23rd, and Larry Shepard on the 9th. Did I omit anyone? Anyone birthday in the month of June that I omit? Let us stand and sing happy birthday to all these individuals. Happy birthday to you. birthdays and actually enjoy your special day enjoy your special day every round go higher and higher and we thank god do we have any anniversary this month anyone celebrating anniversary this month brother roger hayes all right how, how many years two years amen <laughs> amen congratulations amen amen that is jackson Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Yes. All right. God be the glory. Yes, yes. My Lord. Yes, yes. All right, that's right. Yes. Amen. God bless you. God bless you and happy anniversary that deliverance. Amen. God did not pass you by. Amen. We thank God for you. Amen. It's 32 years. She's been going strong ever since. Thank God for you. Any other anniversary celebration? Any special occasion? Anyone would like to um, notify the church or let the church know you have some special occasion, uh, promotion or something going on you'd like to share? Okay. Sister Weatherly. Yeah, Amen. 
God bless you. Amen. That's enough to celebrate. Amen. Congratulations, nephew Zeke. Congratulations. Amen. Amen. Very good. That being said, anyone else? Okay, um, announcement at this time. We open for announcement now. Yes, Mr. King. Bless you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. All right. Let's just sleep. Yeah. All right. Amen. That's a round top and I'm blind for it. Amen. You know what time it's going to be? Amen. Sounds good. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I know Sister Jackson will be there. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. All right. Minister William, then Minister King. Yes. To God be the glory. Yes, to God be the glory. <laughs> to God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Yes. To God be the glory. Yes, yes. To God be the glory. All right. Amen. Jesus, may God be the glory. Thank you. God be the glory. Amen. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Yes.
very true. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Visitors at this time, let's play some visitors. Amen. Tell us your name, brother. God bless you, Brother Witherspoon. God bless you. Pleasure to have you. Amen. Amen. I see Sister Bennett, brother, back there. Amen. Uh, you want to say something to us, brother? Amen. Good to have you. Amen. Amen. It's a blessed, blessed day. Let's give him a round of applause. Amen. I see you. I see you, brother. Amen. All right. That be said, any other final announcements? Sister Witherspoon, do we have any? At this time, we're prepared for communion. Uh, we ask um, everybody to take their rightful place as we prepare for communion. We ask Deacon Mike, we come bless our communion table. And just know that whatever you have faced this week, whatever you've gone through, you ask God to forgive you. He has forgiven you. He has cast your sin as far as the east from the west. He shed his precious blood for the remission of sin. And as long as we trust and believe, and confess our fault. He's just to forgive us. Amen. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all of the world go free? There is a cross for you, and I know there's a cross for me. Yes. Father, we want to thank you for teaching that you heard. Do not pass me back. Lord, we love you. We magnify your holy name. Yes. Give you the honor and the glory. Yes. Right now, Father, we all gather for this sacred ceremony. Yes. May the juice that represents your spill blood. Yes. And may the bread. That represents your broken body. Yes, Lord. May it change from a common use yes. to a spiritual use. Yes, Lord. Right now, Jesus. This and all things we ask. Yes. In the master's name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let everybody say amen. 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 sins away it was his blood that saved me and washed and cleansed me and removed all my sins away
seven would have been served. On the night that Jesus, before his crucifixion, he spoke with his disciples. He told them many things. He told them that he would be going away, but he would come again. He told them about one of them betrayed him. Them, yeah. him. He washed their feet. He told them, this bread I have, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take me. And as often as you eat this bread and drink this drink, you do this in remembrance of me. And he took the drink. This drink represents my blood that was shed for you. As often as you eat this bread and drink this drink, you show forth my coming and the remission of sin. Let us drink. And after which, they sang a hymn and they went out. save us and we thank God we thank God for each and every one of you and we actually do come again we ask you to go in peace and trust God and if there are any issues ask God not to pass you by we thank you our powerful choir we thank you for all those that came on the choir today for the first time in a while and we thank this all of you for blessing our soul our musician our mothers our deaconess each and every one of you our deacons all our ministers God bless you and have a smile upon you until we meet again be blessed